What's up guys, it's Patricia from tarantulaheaven.com. Welcome to Tarantula Tuesday, where I talk about tarantulas, my tarantulas, tarantula information, and just all things about spiders and tarantulas. Over here, we've got Miss Spidey, who is moving around and may travel outside the frame, as she often does, um, but hopefully she stays here and actually moves in this direction so that you guys can see her better. Um, and I also see that there's a little reflection of a nearby outlet and I apologize for that. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about a very cool therapy thing that I have noticed that I, or I just learned recently that involves tarantulas. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to the channel, I am a therapist by day, right? When I'm not making videos about tarantulas and I am constantly doing more trainings, more education, more studying about different therapy tools. Um, therapists are required to, even after their degrees and their certifications, to continue on the path of increased education and learning and to stay up on the current techniques. So um, therapy is what I love. And I really love when two of my favorite things, therapy and tarantulas, intersect. And I actually came across some really interesting information about tarantulas and therapy recently because um, one specific trauma modality uh, that I really feel strongly about is EMDR, Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It is a trauma therapy modality and there are in EMDR, there are several other techniques you can learn on top of EMDR to kind of uh, help the clients and, and also to strengthen their coping skills and their healing. So I was taking a, a training or a, a little um, workshop on the flash technique. And the flash technique is where we might use um, blinking during a session while the client is also doing the EMDR, whether it's tapping or eye movements, to further help their mind process and kind of uh, decrease distressing emotions. It's fascinating. And as I was paying attention to this workshop training, they were talking about how it works and the science behind it and how the flash technique reduces distress really, really quickly. And they mentioned that the person who kind of created this, Dr. Paul Siegel, or Siegel, I'm going to butcher that, um, he was actually the one who kind of brought light to this. And I was just, I was like, I didn't expect to hear the word tarantulas in this training. So all of a sudden I was like scribbling furiously and I was like, this is something I have to look into. Um, I got really, really excited. And so I want to share with you the research about how tarantulas are helping people and uh, contributing to not only the medical field, right? Like I talked quite a bit about how tarantulas are um, being studied and being used for medical purposes to help people with chronic pain, MS, all sorts of things, but also um, to help people in therapy. So this particular research that Dr. Segal did was regarding exposure therapy. And what they found by using brain scans is that the brain works much harder to regulate emotional and behavioral responses of to fear when it actually doesn't know that it's doing that. I'll explain what that means in a more specific way. So Dr. Siegel did an exposure therapy study with several women who had a very intense fear of spiders. This is not like your run of the mill of like, ew, it's, it's squirmy, it's a, a creature, I don't want to uh, interact with it. This, this, these were women who had a significant debilitating phobia of spiders. And I'm sure that um, even those of you who are watching came to this not because you love spiders, but because you're terrified of them and you were curious. <laughs> So I think that, I hope that this certainly gives you hope. So these women were shown pictures of flowers, you know, kind of one after the other. And what these, what this series of pictures actually had was a flash of a picture of a spider or, or actually tarantula mixed in. The women didn't know when it was, was coming. And it was shown so quickly to them that it almost didn't register in their brains. It was like a, a flash of the tarantula in between these photos of beautiful flowers. And what they found was because the exposure wasn't direct, the women barely had time to register what was happening. 
the women were able to regulate their fear response without severe emotional distress. So because these pictures only lasted a second and then they were shown something that was positive or that they that was not distressing, their body had to work really hard to regulate. The brain had to work very hard to um, self-soothe and regulate that fear response. So after this, they were shown images of tarantulas for a longer period of time to monitor their brain activity. And they found that when women saw tarantula images for a quick second, the brain works so much harder. And that, and this translated to a reduced fear of spiders. And they had also done this with a group of women who were exposed to images of tarantula for a longer period of time. These women were exposed to clear images of tarantulas. The way that exposure therapy is usually thought to be, right, you're exposed to images of spiders. And when they were shown images of tarantulas for a long period of time. These women could not control their fear responses at all. Their phobias completely took over. So it seems like the brain really challenges itself when the exposure is not overt. So this is what Seagal said from his research. The study showed that the brain is better able to process feared stimuli when they are presented without conscious awareness. Phobic people may be better prepared to face their fears if at first they are not consciously aware that they have faced them. So it seems like doing this without much awareness is much more effective. And I think that is just so amazing, so impressive. Um, when it comes to uh, what we know about therapy, how to treat phobias, exposure therapy, right? I think that a lot of times we think about exposure therapy as, you know, contamination therapy, touching a toilet or shaking somebody's hand without washing or, um, or uh, you know, uh, looking at pictures or being in the room with an animal that you fear. And it seems like there's a much more effective way in doing this that might actually be a lot less distressing as well for people. And I think that is just so important. And here's the really cool part. They studied these women a year later. And the women who improved significantly, meaning not only were they able to tolerate looking at spiders, but they actually approached tarantulas meaning they got close to them, <laughs> were the women that were shown the uh, flash images of the tarantulas. Like this technique was so effective and it also seems like much more gentle too, right? They were confronting their fears, but in a way that was not very distressing to them. They barely knew that they were doing that. And that translated into them actually being able to be around tarantulas. And compared to the women that were shown the more direct, longer, prolonged images of tarantulas, there was no there was no contest. The the women who were shown prolonged exposure to, to tarantulas really struggled. Their phobia kind of had a hold of them, and they were not able to succeed in actually approaching spiders and and working on their fear in the same way. And that is also the, the similar way to how the flash technique works, um, particularly with EMDR. We, we kind of take something that is a little bit distressing or a lot distressing, depending on where you are in the journey and, and your coping skills and ability, ability to tolerate distress. And then we have them redirect to something more positive. And then we kind of use this flash blinking technique to um, help their mind start processing. And it's, it's actually really cool. Um, I've done the flash technique in different trainings uh, with myself and also with clients. And um, it's very fascinating. But anyway, that has nothing to do with tarantulas, so I won't get into that. But I think it is so cool how uh, tarantulas have contributed to brain science. I love it. I, I mean, of course, tarantulas are contributing and so are animals like snakes and others, but contributing so much to the medical field. And it's so cool to know that they are also contributing to the mental health field 
and that they are used in studies to help us make really significant advancements in how we treat people who are really struggling. And this is not to say that exposure therapy, the way that we've traditionally done it, is harmful, right? If you have a trusted clinician or a therapist, I'm not hating on pro uh, exposure or therapy or prolonged exposure at all. Um, you have a trusted clinician who can guide you through this step by step. That is wonderful. I think that, you know, for every client, we have to think about what is the most gentle, appropriate way to get them to where they want to go. And it's amazing to know that Spidey and her tarantula friends have contributed to that. Anyway, I hope that was interesting for you. Um, maybe not as interesting for you because I'm the one who cares about therapy, <laughs> but um, I just want you to know that tarantulas can be given a lot more credit. All right, guys, take care. Uh, stay tuned for next Tarantula Tuesday. I will see you there. Bye-bye.